Hi, we are Team 5 and we are presenting a paper entitled Twitter Mood Predicts the Stock Market, in which, as you may have guessed, the authors attempt to identify predictive utility from tweets in regards to the change in the stock market. Next slide. There it is. Uh, so the main thrust of this um, is an application of principles that come from behavioral economics. Uh, this field teaches us that consumers are not coldly cal calculating machines in that their emotional states affect their willingness to uh, purchase, their willingness to consume, their willingness to branch out and purchase new products, etc. Um, so the authors are looking to see if these principles apply on a society-wide level. So on an individual level, this is why you see things like uh, ads for pharmaceuticals having very uh, depictions of very pleasant lives. You see ads for casinos having very exciting atmospheres. They're trying to influence the psychological states of potential consumers in the hopes that that will influence them to purchase the product. So the idea here is if these same concepts apply to the level of the society, we should see mood states that change on the society affecting aggregate consuming trends. So the idea here is we need a metric to measure the mood states of the society, and then we need some sort of consumable, some sort of product, commodity that is relevant for the entire society and then if we can establish a link between the two then that is an application of the principles of behavioral economics to a society-wide level so what the authors are doing is using tweets in particular they conduct sentiment analysis on these tweets in order to evaluate the mood states of the society and then they use the dow jones industrial average uh, stock price aggregate as a metric of uh, commodities. So um, let's see. So the main objective is to see if they can use tweets, sentiments derived from tweets, as a predictor of the change in the Dow Jones. Next slide. So a brief overview of the progress of the paper. Um, they start with two tools that are used to conduct sentiment analysis on the tweets that they mine. So the first one is the GPOMS, which is the Google Profile of Mood States, which has six dimensions, calm, alert, sure, vital, kind, and happy. And then they use Opinion Finder, which is a one-dimensional positive versus negative evaluation of text. So they use these two to paint a picture of the society's moods at a particular point in time. Next, they move on to va validating these two methods. They choose a period of time that they know has valid cultural events and then see if the two methods um, reflect the society's mood at those events. Then they move on to evaluating redundancy of parameters. So in short, if any of the six dimensions of the GPOMS are highly predictive of opinion finder, then we can drop one or the other in favor of the other. So there's no correlation between uh, predictors. Next, they move on to a Granger causality evaluation and multiple regression. The idea of the for former is that if you can establish a temporal association between the predictors and what you're trying to predict. So if there's a lag state, so if there's a predictor, if event A occurs one day prior to event B, and that association is consistent, then that is one step clo closer to, to establishing a cause between the two. They use multiple regression to identify which of the six states plus one from opinion find finder are relevant in regards to stock price changes. And then they take those few that they extract from that regression and they move on to establishing a neural network to evaluate predictive accuracy. They choose the neur neural net because it has a history of accuracy in problems like this. So that's 
an overview of the paper itself. And now we'll move on. Mahal is going to cover the data and the methods. So coming to data, the research is based on a collection of public tweets that are recorded from uh, February 28th to December 19th of 2008. And this amounts to a data set containing more than over uh, 9,800,000 tweets, which are re recorded by approximately 2.7 million active users. Now, uh, this data set gives us a glimpse into how people were using the platform at that time and what topics were trending at that time. In the data set, each tweet is, uh, that is recorded has three things. First is a tweet identifier. Second is the date and time of the submission of the tweet, which is uh, in the Greenwich time zone. And the third is the text content of the tweet itself. Now, since this data is based in 2008, back then Twitter was still in its early stages. So the text content of the data is uh, on the platform was limited to 140 characters. Moving to the next slide. Uh, come, uh, so this is uh, cleaning of the data. So to pre-process the tweets, the researchers aimed to examine the public mood on a daily basis and started by filtering and grouping the tweets. First, the stop words and punctuations were removed from the tweets. Uh, this was done to improve their readability and relevance. Common words like and, the, uh, et cetera, do not really carry much meaning and thus it's very easy to remove these words. Second, the tweets that included HTTP or World Wide Web uh, were also removed in order to filter out spam and also other uh, information-oriented tweets. Then the tweets were grouped by the date that they were submitted. This allowed analysis of the public mood on a daily basis and helped investigate how it changed over a period of time. Thus, only tweets that contained explicit statements of the mood states that is um, mostly the tweets that included expressions such as I feel or I don't feel or uh, et cetera were included as these tweets were able to capture a more accurate representation of uh, public mood and emotions. Moving to the next slide, uh, the, this cleaned data uh, goes through three phases of analysis. First phase is the mood assessment phase. Now, this phase involves using two mood assessment tools, Opinion Finder and Google Profile of Mood States. Opinion Finder just measures a positive or a negative mood from the text content, while the Google Profile measures six different mood dimensions, which are calm, alert, sure, vital, kind, and happy. By subjecting all the tweets to these mood assessment tools, a total of seven measures of mood are obtained. After this first phase, uh, the data is sent uh, to the second phase, which is a hypothesis test. Uh, in this hypothesis test, um, it's performed to gauge the public mood if it is predictive of the future Dow Jones index values. And to, this, uh, to do this, a Granger causality analysis measurement is used. And in the third phase, the idea of whether an existing prediction model for the Dow Jones index could be improved by including uh, measurements of public mood or not is explored. Uh, this is done using a self-organizing fuzzy neural network model. Over to Mansa. Yeah, so uh, from this particular slide, we can uh, uh, like we can see that we are trying to talk about uh, two major tools. Those are Opinion Finder and the GPMOS. So Opinion Finder, as Mohal and Benjamin said, so it's basically talk. It basically talks about the polarity, either positive or the negative side. Whereas GPMOS, it talks about uh, six different modes and how the tweets are uh, falling into these particular different mode states. Next slide. So coming to the opinion finder part, uh, as as we reiterated, it's a sentence level subjectivity. Uh, however, when we actually see how opinion finder works, it talks about three different things, which are positive, negative, as well as neutral. However, uh, neutral is not of much use for us, according to this paper. So the researchers have considered only the positive and negative part of it. And then, uh, yeah, it talks bas basically about the positive and negative emotional polarity. So how opinion might finder works. 
So it basically works uh, on, the, on the lexicon of the opinion finder, in which we have a total of uh, 2718 positive uh, words and 4912 negative words. And we score each of the word based on uh, whichever uh, bracket it is falling into, whether it is positive or negative. And then the final score is obtained for each of the tweet, uh, which would be uh, used for the uh, analysis further. So, however, uh, this as this is a unidimensional mode making, uh, I mean, uh, mode predicting one, which gives only whether it is positive or negative, uh, it has its own drawbacks uh, because it cannot tell you what mode actually the particular tweet is falling into, it can just tell you about the bipolarity. It can be either positive or negative. So since it's ignoring the rich multidimensional structure of human mood, we, uh, the researchers have used uh, the second one, uh, which is in the next slide. Okay, uh, let me give you a quick example. Uh, this is how it works, the opinion finder. So we have a sentence called as, I do not love you because you're a terrible guy, but you like me. And uh, this is how we will have the key and value pairs wherein we, for each of the word, we have a particular score. And from our sentence, we will remove all the uh, non-related or non-useful words. And we will uh, concentrate only on the positive and negative words, which we have in the lexicon and take the corresponding scores and calculate the overall sentiment. So this is a quick example of how Opinion Finder works. So since it has its own drawbacks, the researchers have used the GPMOS, which is, can you move to the next slide? Yeah, so GPOMS, uh, which is Google Profile of Mode States. So Google Profile of Mode States, uh, it has six different mode dimensions, which are calm, alert, sure, vital, kind, and happy. So how, uh, how does uh, this work? So basically GPOM, uh, GPOMS, uh, it, it has a questionnaire of 24 different uh, questions and each of the questions will have its own score. However, the researchers have mapped these particular scores uh, to the particular tweets, uh, tweet related data or the words or the phrases and they try to arrive at a final score. So the basic lexicon of GPOMS is derived from the POMS, which is profile of mode states. So uh, when, when we researched about POMS and what is the use of it, so basically POMS is, is mainly used for athletics, wherein they try to give a questionnaire to all the athletes and ask them about their uh, feelings or rate themselves uh, based on a 60, 62 or uh, 65 different words. And based on whatever they give in their options, the score would be arrived and they try to analyze the mental strength of the athlete. And when he's fall falling low or when he is good at a uh, particular mental state, et cetera. So uh, GPOMS is more or less falls into the similar one. However, uh, since tweets has a lot of different words, they expanded the 72 terms of POMS to 964 terms for the, uh, for the use of this paper in order to use in, in this paper. So, uh, and what they did after, after arriving all, at all these scores, they, they, they normalized the entire data uh, based on this particular Z-score formula and then they try to compare the results. Next slide. So yeah, they arrived at uh, a, a final uh, regression equation, which is given uh, below the table. And each of the XI values are nothing but the six values of different mode states, whatever we have. And they try to uh, calculate different values based on the scores, whatever they got. And from the from the summary, they could, uh, I mean, they could see that uh, sure, vital and happy are more significant. And they elaborated or, or extrapolated this in comparison with opinion finder results as well, which is shown in the graph uh, here. Basically, uh, how do we know a model is predicting? So we will have a training set and a testing data set. And that's how we will come to know whether the model is predicting properly or not. Here, uh, the researchers, they did this or extrapolated this against the time series, wherein they have chosen the period, uh, which was mentioned by mentioned by Mohal, that Feb, Feb 2008 to December 2008, and they have chosen sociocultural events, which are majorly the president, uh, presidential day and the Thanksgiving. And they tried to see the sentimental scores from the tweets, and they, they tried to 
uh, extrapolated to uh, the stock exchange market, whether the mood sentiments are affecting the stock exchange market or not. And uh, yes, uh, it has predicted uh, uh, like definitely that more efficiency is what is uh, given in the paper. So even here, if we see the opinion finder uh, results are almost matching with sure vital and happy uh, uh, related time series graphs. So yeah, that's it from my side. Over to Siddharth. So uh, they have performed grandeur causality analysis to check whether, uh, whether the, the opinion finder and the GPOMS has a predictor information about the DJI values. So uh, what is Granger causality analysis? Uh, it is a statistical method to determine whether one time series has a predictive information about the other one. So it is based off an idea that uh, if X causes Y, so uh, then the changes in X X occurs before Y. So uh, that's why we lack the values of uh, opinion finder and uh, GPOMS uh, to check whether they have the correlation with the DJI values. So coming to the equations part, uh, the first equation, it just, uh, it just states that the DT, uh, which is um, the DJI, DJI values at the present day uh, is dependent on the previous days of the DJI values. And the second equation L2, which states that it's dependent on both of the previous day values and the GPOMS and the opinion finder values. So uh, we, uh, to perform the Granger causality analysis, um, we, we have created the null hypothesis as the, as uh, the full uh, L1, which is um, the uh, redu uh, reduced model and L2, which is the full model. Uh, so, uh, null hypothesis is uh, full model is not accepted. That means that the gamma value here is zero, which indicates that uh, the GPOMS and the opinion finder doesn't have any predictive information about the uh, DJI values. So uh, coming to the next slide. So uh, uh, based on the Granger causality analysis uh, results, we can see that the lag values of calm which uh, lag values of calm uh, from two to six have uh, are highly correlated to the DJI values. It ha uh, the, uh, the P value is less than 0 0.05, which indicates that they have uh, significance to the DJI values. And the other five uh, mood dimensions and the opinion finder, the opinion finder values, they are not uh, much correlated to the uh, DJI values. So uh, coming to the next slide. Uh, here we can see the time series plot of the uh, calm values and the DJI values. Uh, the calm values are, that are, uh, are lagged, by the, uh, lagged by three days. And uh, the, here the blue line indicates the DJI values that are, uh, that are converted to their Z-score and the calm values also converted to their Z-score, which is indicated by the red line. As we can see, uh, most of the, uh, the calm values have been predicting the rise and fall uh, in the DJI values accurately. Uh, the gray area in the graph represents uh, the co uh, strong correlation between them. Uh, but at one point of, uh, at one point of the graph, which is October 13th, we can see that the, uh, there's huge, huge difference between the uh, DJI values and the um, mood, mood series values. Uh, there's almost a difference of four standard deviations. This is because of an unexpected uh, Unexpected news, which which is the major bank bailout initiative. Um, so because of that, uh, the DJI values have been like raised uh, over to the roof, uh, and this can't be predicted by the calm values as it is like very unexpected. Uh, but after that, uh, the, you can see that the calm values uh, started getting back on track and uh, predicting the uh, started predicting the rise and falls in the DJI values. So now uh, Upvan will explain the self-organizing first new methods. Um, so a better way to address the nonlinear effects and the uh, and assess the contribution of public mood and assessments, we are moving towards a nonlinear model like a self-organizing fuzzy neural network. In the causality analysis that was just explained by Siddharth, we were seeing that there is a linear relationship. Uh, however, there is a high chance that the relationship between public moods and the stock market values can be nonlinear. So here we are using a five-layer hybrid neural network with the ability to self-organize its neurons in the learning process. Now the question arises that why uh, self-organizing fuzzy neural networks? 
the answer is that such kind of non linear methods are being previously used to describe the characteristics of stock mass stock market and we are working on the stock market so they were a good uh, choice for non linear models next moving towards the uh, methodology of how the paper has used the soffn uh, in this case first of all they took the past 3 days of the uh, dji values and then they also used the various permutations of mode and time series for uh, these 3 days so for example um, if we have the dji values for day 1 day 2 day 3 so for all these 3 days we'll take multiple permutations of modes of public modes and then using this neural network we'll try to predict and understand that does mode has any relationship between stock market analysis uh, so here the hypothesis is uh, the the ho is public mode measurement improves the predictive models and the ha is no improvement so in the next slide we'll further move and understand the results so the first result was that even after adding positive or negative sentence uh, sentiments from the opinion finder there had no effect on the prediction of the dji values Secondly, as similar to the causality analysis, adding calm as the sentiment gives the highest accuracy, which is 86.7%. Then uh, we would have expect that happy will also give a high accuracy. However, it didn't. Uh, but a combination of happy and calm was giving a higher accuracy than only happy. The same can be seen from this table where happy and calm are giving an accuracy of 80% and calm only is giving an accuracy of 86.7%. However, the all the other combinations are not giving a higher accuracy than these two. And also we can see that more accuracy is resulted after using a combination of modes, which shows that there is a non real relationship among the different dimension of modes. Like you can see that uh, earlier in the other causality analysis, there were uh, less accuracy with something with a negative emotion. However, if you're combining it together, the accuracies are moving up. So we can say that uh, they are non regionally correlated, uh, correlated all these modes. And uh, from all the three results of opinion finder from the causality analysis and from neural networks uh, we've tried to understand how these tweets are changing the uh, how these tweets are affecting uh, the stock market and i think a further conclusion will be provided by keetana on the next slides so now let's look at how this paper is related to neural networks and association co mining so this paper uses neural networks to understand or address how the non-linearity non -linearity occurs in this process and also understand the relationship between the public mode and how these public modes are, is like drive the prediction of the stock market. So the next is let's understand how ARM is used in this paper. So the ARM is used to identify the co-occurrence of specific words or phrases in these tweets based on certain sentimental scores. By this, this will help us identify a better trend and also help us in the, uh, improve the accuracy of the predictive model. The next slide. To wrap this up, let us understand, uh, let's look at a few of the observations that have been talked about in the uh, paper. And the first one being how Twitter feeds have the potential to predict stock market value by just analyzing the changes in the public mode. So the next fact of that, next interesting observation that can be made from this paper is that how calmness is a stronger parameter predictor than a positive sentiment. This is true because usually people, uh, it, is, it can be observed that people on Twitter, when providing a negative sentiment, uh, the negative sentiment is more frequent and more intense when compared to a positive sentiment. So by adding a power calmness parameter, it helps to balance and to uh, and thereby reduce the skewness by doing sentimental analysis. Finally, this paper provides how uh, uh, lets us know how Twitter is an excellent resource for identifying uh, uh, for identifying public change in public modes and how these parameters should be considered and are important while uh, developing marketing models.